this amazing book from the fragments of the Kawan. It's Middle Persian. So what this is, is the Book of the Giants. It was... This piece that I'm reading to you was released by the Bulletin of the School of Oriental and African Studies in the University of London in 1943. The transcriptions of the original text have been omitted. So, Isaac de Beausopre, or Huguenot, author of one of the best books ever written on Manichaeism, the history, the critique of Manichae and Manichaeism, Amsterdam, 1734 to 1739 was the one to make the only sound suggestions on the sources used by Mani for the compilation of his Book of the Giants, the Book of Enoch, and the, and then I can't read Greek, but which Kenan, a great-grandson of Noah, discovered lying in a field. The latter work has been identified by Alfaric with a book whose contents are briefly indicated in the Decretum Galassianum. So, this is called Liber de Yogia, the book of the ogres, the book of the giants, and the book of Ogia. The book of Enoch, which is composed in the Hebrew language in the second century, only an Ethiopic version, a few Greek fragments, and some experts, excerpts made by the Byzantine chronographer Georgius Sincellus survive. Mani, who could hardly read the Hebrew, must have used an Aramaic, Aramaic edition. Okay, so the, this is all the history of how they wrote the book, how they gathered these texts. So we won't go into that too far. It's pretty boring, but I'm going to try and cut to the actual text itself. So remember that we're, we're talking about the story of the fallen angels and their giant sons. So this is clearly, this is part of the, the story. Okay, so I'm just going to cut in with... The problem is that this piece is not completely finished as much as the Book of Enoch is finished, so we'll put it all together at the end. So, the Book of Enoch did not square with Mani's convictions that no evil could come from good. Therefore, he had transformed them into demons, namely those demons that when the world was being constructed had been imprisoned in the skies under the supervision of the Rex Honoris, or the King of Honor. They rebelled and were recaptured, but 200 of them escaped to the earth. Mani also used the term Ephiropot, preserved in Coptic. So the puzzling clause of Genesis 6, 4, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, was interpreted by Mani in this fashion. When the Egregori descended, the animals, or proto-animals, were already in existence. Many confused Nephilim with Nephal. I don't think he did make any confusion. Where the giants and the abortions are mentioned in one breath. In Manichaean parlance, abortion is synonymous with animal. So this is interesting. Uh, just using the words there. How humans are actually in the official government text. If you look up human or person, it comes up as animal or beast of the field. So it's just an interesting uh, tie-in of how they, they use words against us. We're going to carry on. There's another portion here that I'm going to get into about, about the name of God again and how that was actually used and what, what really happened there. So what we know, what I know so far, is that Samyaza knew the name of God or one of those angels knew the name of God and made a deal to give that name to Ishtar and that that is what made Ishtar so powerful and made him or her a god, a little g god. So what happened there, Tabaet, the son of the serpent, or son of serpent, and Kabael taught the oath to the humans. And the oath's name is Pika. They asked Michael to enunciate the name so that they might say it in the oath. And they placed it in Aka'e, in the hand of Michael. The heavens are hung, and the world is hung from the oath. So the oath is God's deal, or God's binding arrangement with 
the stars and with the heavens and with the heavenly appointed angels to conduct their marching orders as as he's laid forth in that deal and it's a contract so it's the contract or the covenant with God and the angels and it's the contract and the covenant to hold up their end of the bargain and hold up the universe as we know it the earth and the clouds and and the heavens and everything the cosmos the cosmic devices so we'll carry on back to the book of Ogum or Ogium isn't it interesting that the book of Ogum and Ogum is a language that's made of scratch marks basically uh, bar marks that is found all over the world and in North America it's almost as if the Giants were on the run and made a run to North America for a while uh, before they were all killed off or captured. And you see that what happened when we talked about earlier that God told the angels to bind he told Gabriel and Michael and Uriel to bind the bad angels, the fallen angels and he told them to give a sword or weapons to the giants and cause them to have civil war and kill each other. And so that's what this book is about. It's there's more they're not, they're named uh, the Gaborim is another name for giants uh from the Syriac word gabare. In eastern sources they are mostly referred to as demons. The puzzling clause the Nephilim were on the earth in those days was possibly misinterpreted. I think that it was not misinterpreted. So, we are therefore left with Gaborim, understood as giants. Parth, K-W, Kwa, is freely used in Manichaean texts as of the father of light, of solar deities, also of the first man, and Arhaman, with reference to the first battle, which therefore could have been described as Arhaman, and it uses a Greek word for it. However, the word Kwa is applied only to men and such beings as are imagined anthropomorphous, where one would translate it as monster, the Iranian equivalent is mazan. Thus, the kafalia, whose breathing operations are responsible for ebb and flow, is called mitzin i rigi in Middle Persian. Accordingly, the related words mazan, mazanig, sogd, mitzni, and others should be rendered as monster or gigantic monstrous. The Egregori and their giant progeny are fought and vanquished by four archangels, Raphael, Michael, Gabriel, and Israel, Enoch, Tenwan, or Uriel, or Fanuel. In the Book of the Giants, they are called the four angels. They are frequently invoked by name in Manichaean prayers. There were no details about individual feats of the giants in the Book of Enoch. Manny filled the gap with the help of the above-mentioned Liber de Ogia Nomine Gigante. Uh, so, the book of the ogres named uh, Giants. This Ogias has been identified with Og of Bashan, who, according to late sources, lived 5,000 years and managed to survive the deluge thanks to his giant size. But possibly stories that primarily appertain to Ogias were transferred to the better known Og, owing to the resemblance of their names. The name of Ogias is Y in the Manichaean fragments, and this spelling is presumably more correct than that of Ogias. Og indubitably would appear as Wug, since Mani took Y from an Aramaic text. The ending of Ogias cannot be regarded as a Greek addition. Ogias fought with a Draco, and so did Oya. His enemy was the Leviathan. Oya and his brother Ahya were the sons of Shamas, the chief of the Egregori in the Book of Enoch. So Shem or Shem, uh, different translations of Shamas and and also we know that that is we know what character that is in the Persian edition of the Kawan Ohia and Aya are translated as Sam and Nariman but the original names are kept in one passage the translator did well to choose Sam Krasasp both with regard to Oji longevity Sam is one of the immortals and to his fight with the dragon Sam is a famous dragon killer in the Sogdian fragments the name of San is spelt differently this name may have been invented to keep the names of the brothers resembling each other. Nariman was evidently not known as Sogdiana as a brother of Sam, according to the Book of the Giants. The 
preoccupation of Sam Sham was his quarrel with the giant Mahawe, the son of Virog Dodd, who was one of the twenty years of the Egregori. The Book of the Giants was published in not less than six or seven languages. From the original Syriac, the Greek and Middle Persian versions were made. The Sogdian edition was probably derived from the Middle Persian, the Uyghur from the Sogdian. There is no trace of a Parthian text. The book may have existed in Coptic. Fragments of the Kawan, Middle Persian. So remember, we're telling the story of Og and of the giants. A hard arrow bow, he that Sam said, Blessed be, had he seen this, he would not have died. Then Shamazad said to Sam, his son, All that Mahawe has done is spoilt. Thereupon he said, Son and Sam, We are left here until forever and ever, like those that are in the fiery hell as my father Virogdad was. Then Shamazad says, It is true what he says. He says one of thousands for one of thousands. Sam thereupon began, and Mahawai too in many places, until to that place he might escape, and something Virogdad. Hobabis robbed Ar of Noxtag, his wife. Thereupon the giants began to kill each other and to abduct their wives. The creatures too began to kill each other. Sam before the sun, one hand in the air, the other, whatever he obtained to his brother, was imprisoned over Toxtag. So, what he's saying there is that the four angels, in whatever means, however they did it, were able to make Hobabis sleep with Ar's wife. Okay, and it carries on about Mani's understanding of the Gaborim and their understanding of how these texts were moved through the area and and how the words give away where they came from. So I'll read this little bit here. In their journey across Central Asia, the stories of the Book of the Giants were influenced by local traditions. Thus, the translation of Oyah as Sam in its train, the introduction of myth appertaining to that Iranian hero. This explains the immortality of Sam, according to text. The country of Aryan Vedan, Aryan Vaya, in text G26, is a similar innovation. The Kogman Mountains, in text Bravo, may reflect the Mount Hermon. The progeny of the fallen angels was confined in 36 towns, text Sogdian. Owing to the introduction of the Mount Sumeru, this number was changed in Sogdiana to 32, text G22. The heaven of Indra is situated before the four peaks of the Meru and consists of 32 cities of Devas, or Devas. The Atel Handbook of Chinese Buddhism, page 148. Triastrimsat, Fragments of the Kawan, A. Middle Persian. Fifteen fragments of a book threw out small pieces from the center of the pages. It has proved impossible so far to re-establish the original order of the pages on purely technical grounds, the size of the fragments, the appearance of the margins, etc. I at first assumed the following sequence. Being unable to estimate the cogency of these technical reasons now, because of the absence of any photographic material, I have decided to change the order of the first six fragments in the following way. And then he changes the order. Unfortunately, we do not know in what order many had told the story of the giants. The task of finding the original order is made still more difficult by the fact that besides the Kawan book contained one or more uh, treatises, namely parables referring to the hearers, and possibly a discourse on the five elements. And the only fragments that undoubtedly belong to the Kawan, while the position of the fragments is particularly doubtful, it must be borne in mind that whole folios may be missing between apparently successive pages. Fragment C. Hard arrow bow he that Sam said, Blessed, had he seen that he would not have died. Then Shamzaid said to Sam his son, All that Matawai has done is spoiled. And thereupon he said to me, We are stuck here, and and that are in the fiery hell as my father Varogdad was. Shahamazad said, It is true what he says. He says one of thousands for one of thousands. And Sam thereupon began, Mahawai too in many places, until to that place he might escape. And Varogdad Hobablus rogged Ar of Naxtag, his wife. Thereupon the giants began to kill each other and to abduct their wives. The creatures, too, began to kill each other. And Sam, before the sun, one hand in the air, 
the other pointed towards the ground perhaps whatever he obtained to his brother again imprisoned over toxtag to the angels from heaven toxtag threw or was thrown into the water finally in his sleep toxtag saw three signs one portending one woe and flight and one annihilation naraman saw a garden full of trees and rows two hundred came out the trees enoch now it's on to the next fragment uh, fragment l enoch the apostle gave a message to the demons and their children to you not a peace the judgment on you is that you shall be bound for the sins you have committed you shall see the destruction of your children ruling for a hundred and twenty years wild ass the ibex the ram the goat the gazelle the onyx the oryx of each two hundred a pair the other wild beasts birds and animals and their wine shall be six thousand jugs irritation of water and their oil shall be and it cuts to the next fragment uh, father nuptials until the completion of his in fighting and in the nest oya and aya he said to his brother get up and we will take what our father has ordered us to the pledge we have given of battle and the giants together and it's broken again goes to 67 not the something but of the line not the rainbow but the bow not the something but the firm not the sharpness of the blade but the strength of the ox not the eagle but his wing and i'm sure that this is a a, a prose that some other people know from some other quotation not the eagle but his wings not the something but the gold not the not the gold but the brass that hammers it not the proud ruler but the diadem on his head not the splendid cypress but the blank of the mountain not he that engages in quarrels but he that is true in his speech not the evil fruit but the poison in it not they that are placed in the skies but the god of all worlds not the servant is proud but the lord that is above him not one that is sent, but the man that sent him. Thereupon Naraman said, And in another place I saw those that were weeping for the ruin that had befallen them, and whose cries and laments rose up to heaven. And also I saw another place, where there were tyrants and rulers in great number, who had lived in sin and evil deeds. When many were killed, four hundred thousand righteous, with fire, naphtha, and brimstone, and the angels veiled, or covered, or protected, or moved out of sight, Enoch, uh, electi auditresses, and ravished them. They chose beautiful women, and demanded them in marriage, and sordid deeds, and all carried off severally. They were subjected to tasks and services, and they, from each city, and were ordered to serve the Messenians, were directed to prepare the Cusians to sweep and water the Persians, to the slaying the righteous, the good deeds, the elements, the crown, the diadem, the garland, the garment of light, the seven demons like a blacksmith who binds or shuts, fastens and looses, or opens or detaches, who from the seeds of something and serves the king, and offends when weeping with mercy the hand the pious gave, presents some buried idols. The Jews did good and evil, some make their god half demon, half god, killing the seven demons. The eye the various colors that buy and bile if blank again from the five elements as if it were a means not to die they fill themselves with food and drink their garment is this corpse and not firm its ground is not firm like someone imprisoned in this corpse in bones nerves flesh veins and skin and entered herself into it then he cries out over sun and moon the just gods two flames over the elements, the trees, and the animals. But God, Zerwan, in each epoch sends, an, uh, sends apostles, uh, Zarathustra, Buddha, Christ. Evil intention from where he came, the misguided recognized the five elements, the five kinds of trees, the five kinds of animals. We receive from Mani the Lord the five commandments to the three seals, living, profession, and wisdom. Moon, rest from the power or deceit own and keep the measured mixture trees and wells in two water and fruit milk he should not offend his brother the wise here who like unto juniper leaves much profit like a farmer who sows seed in many the hearer who knowledge is like unto a man that threw the dish called a frotag into milk it became hard not the part that ruin at first heavy like 
First it is honored might shine six days. The hearer who gives alms to the elect is like unto a poor man that presents his daughter to the king. He reaches a position of great honor in the body of the elect. The food given to him as alms is purified in the same manner as uh, that by fire and wind, beautiful clothes on a clean body, turn. Witness fruit, two hundred, tree like firewood, like a grain, radiance. The hearer in the world and the alms within the church are like unto a ship on the sea. The towing line is in the hand of the tower on shore. The sail is on board the ship. The sea is the world. The ship is the, the, is the alms. The tower is the, question mark, the towing line, question mark, is the wisdom. 214. The hearer is like unto the branch of a fruitless tree, fruitless, and the hearer's fruit that pious deeds. The elect, the hearer, and Vaman are like unto three brothers to whom some possessions were left by their father, a piece of land, and seed. They became partners, they reap, and the hearer, like an image of the king, and it's broken again, fragment D, an image of the king cast of gold, the king gave presents. The hearer that copies a book is like unto a sick man that gave his thing to a man. The hearer that gives his daughter to the church is like a pledge who the father gave his son to learn to father pledge. Hearer again the hearer is like stumble is purified to. The soul from the church is like unto the wife of the soldier, or Roman who infantrist one shoe, whoever with a denarius was. The wind tore out one, he was abashed from the ground ground and it breaks again sent the hearer that makes one is like unto a compassionate mother who had seven sons and the enemy killed all the hearer that has piety a well one on the shore of the sea one in the boat he that is on shore tows him that is in the boat he that is in the boat something the sea upwards to something like like a pearl a diadem church like unto a man that fruit and flowers then they praise fruitful tree like unto a man that bought a piece of land on that piece of land there was a well and in that well a bag full of drachmas and the king was filled with wonder share pledge numerous here at like unto a garment like to the master like in a blacksmith the goldsmith to honor the blacksmith to one two so you can see how those fragments you could take them and combine it and come out with the the thing that makes sense okay according to lecoq turkey and mani the third the museum this this book i i believe he's written order of pages according to lecoq uh, the photo published by bang seems to support lecoq's opinion uh, first page fire was going to come out and i saw that the sun was at the point of rising and that his center or dew without increasing above was going to start rolling then came a voice from the air above calling me it spoke thus o son of virogdad your affairs are lamentable more than this you shall not see do not die now prematurely but turn quickly back from here and again besides this voice i heard the voice of enoch the apostle from the south without however seeing him at all speaking my name very lovingly he called and downwards from then second page for the closed door of the sun will open the sun's light and heat will descend and set your wings alight. You will burn and die, said he. Having heard these words, I beat my wings and quickly flew down from the air. I looked back. Dawn had, with the light of the sun, it had come to rise over the Kogmon Mountains. And again a voice came from above, bringing the command of Enoch the Apostle. It said, I call you, Varogdad. I know his direction. You, when it breaks up, you, now quickly, people also and then a small scrap from the center of the page. The order of the page is uncertain. I shall see thereupon. Now Psalm the giant was very angry, and laid hands on Mahawai the giant, with the intention I shall slay and kill you. Then the other giants, giants said, or were told, Do not be afraid, for Psalm the giant will want to kill you, but I shall not let him. I myself shall damage. Thereupon Mahawai the giant was satisfied outside and left read the dream we have seen thereupon enoch thus and the trees that came out those are the egregory and the giants that came out of the women and over and pulled out over 
when they saw the apostle before the apostle, those demons that were timid were very, very glad at seeing the apostle. All of them assembled before him. Also of those that were tyrants and criminals, they were worried and much afraid. Then thereupon those powerful demons spoke thus to the pious apostle, By us any further sin will not be committed, my lord. Why have you imposed such a weighty injunction? And we can see that this lines up with the Book of Enoch and other texts. Six fragmentary columns from the middle of the page. <clears throat> Poverty, those who harass the happiness of the righteous, on that account they shall fall into eternal ruin and distress, into that fire, the mother of all conflagrations and the foundation of all ruined tyrants. And when these sinful misbegotten sons of ruin in those crevices, and you have not been better, in error you thought you would this false power eternally have, you all this iniquity, you that call to us with the voice of falsehood, neither did we reveal ourselves on your account so that you could see us, nor thus ourselves through the praise and greatness that to us was given to you. But sinners is visible where out of this fire your soul will be prepared for the transfer to eternal ruin. And as for you, sinful misbegotten sons of the wrathful self, confounders of the true words of that holy one, disturbers of the actions of good deed, aggressors upon piety, somethingers of the living, who there, it breaks up again, column E, and on brilliant wings they shall fly and soar further outside and above that fire, and shall gaze into its depth and height. And those righteous that will stand around it outside and above, they themselves shall have power over that great fire and over everything in it, and something blaze in souls that, they are purer and stronger than the great fire of ruin that sets the world ablaze. They shall stand around it, outside and above, and splendor shall shine over them. Further outside and above it they shall fly, after those souls that may try to escape from the fire. And that, and then they throw those souls back into the fire. The four angels with the two hundred demons, they took and imprisoned all the helpers that were in the heavens. And the angels themselves descended from the heaven to the earth. And when the two hundred demons saw those angels, they were much afraid and worried. They assumed the shape of men and hid themselves. Thereupon the angels forcibly removed the men from the demons, laid them aside, and put watchers over them. The giants, and it breaks up, were sons, with each other in bodily union, with each other self and the that had been born to them. They forcibly removed them from the demons, and they led one half of them eastwards and the other half westwards on the skirts of four huge mountains towards the foot of the Sameru mountain, into thirty-two towns which the living spirit had prepared for them in the beginning, and one calls that place Arian Wizan, or Arian Wizan. And those men are, or were, in the first, trained in the first arts and crafts. They made the angels, they made something, and the angels, and to the demons, and they went to fight. And those two hundred demons fought a hard battle with the four angels until the four angels used fire, naphtha, and brimstone. And then there's the next chapter. And what they had seen in the heaven among the gods, and also what they had seen in hell, their native land, and furthermore, what they had seen on earth. All that they began to teach Hendiatus to the men. Shamazad, the two sons, were born by one of them he named Ohia, in Sogdian he is called Sham the Giant. And again, a second son was born to him. He named him Ohia, its Sogdian equivalent is Patsam. As for the remaining giants, they were born to the other demons and Yaksas. Uh, Colophon completed the chapter on the coming of the 200 demons. And there's the M500, a small fragment. Manliness and powerful tyranny, he or you shall not die. The giant Sam and his brother will live eternally, for in the whole world in power and strength and in they have no equal. Quotations and allusions. Uh, Middle Persian. And in the coming of the two hundred demons there are two paths, the herding speech and the hard labor. These belong or lead to hell. The herding speech and the hard labor. The first page, before they were, and all the something fulfilled their tasks lawfully angels and all the angels fulfilled their tasks lawfully now they became excited and irritated for the following reason namely the two hundred demons came down to the sphere from the high heaven and the something in the world they became excited and irritated for their lifelines and the connections of their pneumatic veins are joined to sphere 
completed the exposition of the three worlds. Here begins the coming of Jesus and his bringing the religion to Adam and Sitil. You should care and... Then we have Coptic. Earthquake and malice happened in the watch post of the great king of honor, namely the Egregori, who arose at the time when they were, and there descended those who were sent to confound them. Uh, it's a different. These are all different uh, translations of different texts that uh, correlate or are a part of this. Now attend and behold how the great king of honor, who is Evoya, is in the third heaven. He is with the wrath and a rebellion. When malice and wrath arose in his camp, namely the Egregory of heaven, who in his watch district rebelled and descended to the earth, they did all deeds of malice, they revealed the arts in the world, and the mysteries of heaven to the men. Rebellion and ruin came about on the earth. Then an Parthian, fragment of a treatise entitled Reding Wifers, Commentary on Mani's Opus, Ardahang, and the story about the great fire, like unto the way in which the fire, with, with powerful wrath, swallows this world and enjoys it, like unto the way in which this fire, that is in the body, swallows the exterior fire that is in fruit and food, and enjoys it. Again, like unto the story in which two brothers who found a treasure, and a pursuer lacerated each other, and they died like unto the fight in which Oyah and Raphael lacerated each other, and they vanished like unto the story in which a lion cub a calf in a wood, or on a meadow, and a fox lacerated each other, and they vanished or died. Thus the great fire swallows both of the fires. Then another copy of this text is Arabic from Middle Persian, al Gadanfar. In Sakao's edition of Baruni's The Book of the Giants, by Mani of Babylon, is filled with stories about these antediluvian giants, amongst whom Sam and Nariman. On account of the malice and rebellion that had arisen in the watchpost of the great king of honor, namely the Egregori, from whom the heavens had descended to the earth, on their account the four angels received their orders. They bound the Egregori with eternal fetters in the prison of the dark. Their sons were destroyed upon the earth. Coptic again, Manic Psalm book. The righteous who were burnt in the fire they endured. This multitude that were wiped out, four thousand. Enoch also, the sage, the transgressors being evil, four hundred thousand righteous, the years of Enoch. Before the Egregori rebelled and descended from heaven, a prison had been built for them in the depth of the earth beneath the mountains. Before the sons of the giants were born who knew not righteousness and piety among themselves, thirty-six towns had been prepared and erected, so that the sons of the giants should live in them, that they came to beget who live a thousand years. Mirror image, this is order of pages unknown, uh, Parthian. Mirror image distributed the men, and Enoch was veiled and moved out of sight. They took afterwards with donkey goads, slaves, and waterless trees, then and imprisoned the demons, and of them seven and twelve, three thousand two hundred and eighty, the beginning of King Vistas, in the palace he flamed forth, or in the brilliant palace, and at night, then to the broken gate, the men, the physicians, the merchants, the farmers at sea, the armored, he came out. The appendix in Parthian. From the end of a hymn, a peaceful sovereign was King Vistasp in Arian, Wizon, Wachman and Zarel, the, the sovereign's queen. Kudos received the faith, the prince, they have secured a place in the heavenly hall and quietude for ever and ever. So it's just saying, it's just a, a hymn saying that he was a peaceful sovereign and that they received their place in heaven and hell and, and who they were. But you notice that it's Arian and Archian. Uh, now again in, in Sogdian, that was Parthian, and now again in Sogdian, small fragment, order of pages uncertain, because the house of the gods, eternal joy and good, for so it is said at that time that Yima was in the world, and at the time of the new moon the blessed denizens of the world all assembled, all they offered five garlands in homage, and Yima accepted those garlands, and those that and great kingship was his, and on them and acclamations, and from that pious he placed the garlands on his head, the denizens of the world. You see that the translations are extremely rough. Summary of the Book of the Dreams.
we've already been through the Book of the Watchers in Enoch, and so this will continue on with what's happened there. So, I read you the fragments, and now we're going to put it back together. The fragments of and allusions to the Manichaean version of the Book of the Giants have been recovered in medieval manuscripts in various languages, including Middle Persian, Sogdian, Uyghur, Coptic, Parthian, and Latin. The following is a summary of the, the surviving fragments and allusions, which I have attempted extremely tentatively to put in sequence. The summaries are also very tentative. M1. The two hundred demons descend to earth. Their descent from heaven stirs up the other heavenly beings. They descend because of the beauty of the women they saw there, and they reveal forbidden arts and heavenly mysteries in order to seduce these women, and they bring about ruin on the earth. Enoch warns that the coming of the two hundred demons will lead only to herding speech and hard labor. They then subjugate the human race, killing hundreds of thousands of the righteous in battle, forcibly marrying beautiful women, and enslaving the nations. The angels veil Enoch, and the righteous endure the burning, and Enoch the sage is mentioned. Uh, Samazad, Samhaza, begets two giant sons, Sahim, Oyach, and Patsam, Naraman, or Achya, Chaya, and the other demons and Yaksaz beget the rest of the giants. So we see that there is one split lineage that came directly from Samyaza, uh, and that, that that one is notable and mentioned, and that all the others come the other yaksas beget the rest of the giants the giants grow up and wreak ruin upon the earth and the human race the lamentation of humanity reaches up to heaven yima a transmogrification of the jewish god according to manny's cosmology accepts the homage of humankind as they plead for help and someone boasts that psalm and his brother will live and rule forever in their unequaled power and strength the giant Hobabas, or Hombaba, robs someone of his wife, and the giants fall out among themselves and begin killing one another and other creatures. Psalm and his brother are mentioned. It appears that Psalm has a dream in which a tablet was thrown in the water. It seems to have borne three signs, one portending woe, one portending their flight, and one portending their destruction. Naraman then has a dream about a garden full of trees and rows, and two hundred of something, perhaps trees, it is trees, are mentioned. Um, someone recites a list of proverbs involving contrasts, usually between the lesser and the greater, or the derivative from the source. Naraman tells how he saw in the dream some who were weeping and lamenting, and many others who were sinful rulers. The giant Mahoe, son of Virogdad, Barakel, of 1 Enoch 6-7, hears a cautioning voice as he flies along at sunrise, and he is guided to safety by Enoch the Apostle and the heavenly voice, which warn him to descend before the sun sets his wings on fire, shades of Icarus. He lands, and the voice leads him to Enoch. And fragment M15. Enoch interprets this dream, indicating that the trees represented the egregory, the watchers, and also mentioning the giants who were born of women, something the trees are pulled out of. In M16, someone reports that someone ordered him not to run away, but to bring the message written on two stone tablets, showing it first to Naraman. He has brought them in order to share the contents of one tablet pertaining to the demons with the giants. Samazad tells him to read the writing by Enoch. Enoch the Apostle gives a message of judgment to the demons and their children, telling them that they will have no peace and that they will see the destruction of their children. He refers to the giants ruling for 120 years, and then he predicts either an era of earthly fecundity, presumably after the flood, or else the flood itself. And he's predicting the flood itself. Psalm exhorts the other giants to cheer up and eat, but they are too sorrowful to eat and instead fall asleep. Mahoe goes to Atan Bush, otherwise known as Utnapistim, either another giant or another name for Enoch, and tells him all. When Mahoe returns, Psalm has a dream in which he ascends to heaven. He sees the water of the earth consumed with heat, and a demon comes out of the water. Some beings 
the protecting spirits are invisible, but he sees the heavenly rulers. Then M19, Sam, Samazad, and Mahoe have a conversation. So remember that Samazad is Samyaza. Mahoe mentions his father, Varogdad. There are obscure references to weapons and a blessing on someone who saw something and escaped death, or would have escaped death. Sam and Mahoe search for something. Someone gives satisfactory assurance to Mahoe that he will be protected from Sam, but nevertheless Sam and Mahoe fall out and begin to fight. The wicked demons are glad to see the apostle Enoch and assemble timidly before him. Apparently they promise to reform their ways and they ask for mercy. Uh, the wicked demons are glad to see the apostle Enoch and assemble timidly before him. Enoch warns the demons that they will be taken from a fire to face eternal damnation, despite their belief that they would never lose their misused power. He also addresses their sinful, misbegotten sons, the giants, and describes how the righteous will fly over the fire of damnation and gloat over the souls inside it, and guard that they stay in there, I would add. Uh, M23, they, presumably the demons, take some heavenly helpers hostage. As a result, the angels descend from heaven, terrifying the 200 demons, who take human form and hide among human beings. The angels separate out the human beings and set a watch over them. They seize the giants from the demons and lead them, the children of the giants, to safety in 32 distant towns prepared for them by the living spirit at Aryan Wiesen the traditional homeland of the Indo-Iranians, in the vicinity of the sacred Mount Sumeru and other mountains. These people originated the arts and crafts. The 200 demons fight a massive and fiery battle with the four angels. M24. A tanbush does battle, accompanied by watchers and giants, and three of the giants are killed. An angel and others are also killed. Oyach and Ayach resolve to keep their promise to do battle, and they boast of their prowess. Four angels, by divine command, bind the Igrigori with everlasting chains in a dark prison, and annihilate their children. Even before the rebellion of the Igrigori, this prison had been built for them under the mountains. In addition, thirty-six towns had been prepared for the habitation of the wicked and long-lived sons of the giants before they were even born. Oyah, or Aya, the primordial monster Leviathan, and the archangel Raphael engage in a great battle, and they vanished, according to one tradition. Oya survived the flood and fought this battle after it. 3,280 years passed between the time of Enoch and the time of King Vishtasp, who ruled at the time of the prophet Zoroaster, who, along with Buddha and Christ, was an apostle who came before the final apostle Mani. There's a couple interesting things I wanted to mention there. That um, when they talked about they are taken from the fire. It just endure the burning, and Enoch the sage is mentioned. Now that ties into what we've been talking about recently, or and some things that I saw that again that Zen Garcia was talking about in his amazing stuff that he's tied up, and what he was talking about there is that the righteous, actually, in between this period and uh, and Christ coming back to earth or coming to earth for the first time the, the first appearance of the Savior that the righteous had to endure that time period in hell because they had no Savior to come down and take them from Sheol and that that is what happens in the Chronicles of Longinus and so go and check out that work I've posted it it's part of this playlist it's been part of the playlist that this will be part of so you can see it there or go to zen's work at endeavor freedom and check out the chronicles of longinus or longinus and the thracian chronicles and you'll see what i'm talking about there and uh, after that, we also the other thing that I wanted to notice is that for some reason this person believes that the final apostle was Mani, or Manny. An effort to nuance this version is given after the summary. So A1, the angelic watchers beget the Nephilim and the giants, perhaps the same creatures, but perhaps not, through miscegenation with mortal women. 
uh, these rapacious monsters inflict bloodshed and injustice upon the earth and destruction upon the sea, animals, plants, cattle, and humanity. All this is reported to Enoch, the scribe of interpretation. Enoch addresses God, praising him for his glory, knowledge, strength, and creative acts. But a number a number of giants, including Hobabas and Humbaba, Mahoe, and perhaps the watcher Barak El, have a conversation in which they discuss killing, perhaps, of human beings. Following hints from the Manichaean version and the Midrash of Samyaza, perhaps we should reconstruct here an episode in which the giants have a first pair of dreams predicting the Great Flood. If so, the first dream seems to involve the effacing of a writing tablet by submerging it in water. Stuckenbrook also suggests that a fragment which refers to three shoots in a garden belongs to the second parable. The first dream may have told of an angel doing the effacing as a symbol of the destruction wrought by the flood. The second may have told of an angel descending and cutting down all but three shoots, representing the sons of Noah, in the garden. Mahaway consults Enoch the first time. It is possible that the first tablet was introduced at this point. These episodes are entirely lost, but their existence is deduced by later references in the fragments. The giants Oya and Mahoe have a conversation in which Mahoe tells Oya something he heard while in the presence of his, Mahoe's father, the watcher Barakel. Oya responds that he too has heard of four marvels, and he starts to make a comparison which pertains to a woman giving birth. There is a conversation among the giants in which one of them admits that, despite his own might, he has been unable to prevail in war against some heavenly beings, presumably the archangels. Oya mentions an oppressive dream which has disturbed him, and someone tells the giant Gilgamesh to recount his dream as well. Oya says something to his brother Haya about the watcher Azazel, the watchers and the giants. In another fragment that may continue this speech, one of the giants resigns himself that there is no escape and that he and the others must die for their misdeeds. He refers to a vision that hinders him from sleeping. Someone enters the assembly of the giants. Perhaps a conversation continues in which the giants anticipate with dread their coming destruction in the flood for their sins, in which they will be stripped of their form and reduced to being evil spirits. The watchers tell the giants that they themselves are imprisoned and perhaps that the giants are being defeated. Mahaway and the two tablets are mentioned. The second tablet is now read. It is a letter from Enoch to the watcher Samyaza and his companions, and they are rebuked for their and their sons, the giants' corrupt acts, which have come to the attention of the archangel Raphael. They are warned of imminent destruction and ordered to release their hostages and to pray. Nevertheless, Oya informs the giants of a message from Gilgamesh and Hobabas, which involves the cursing of the princes and which cheers the giants up. The two giants, Oya and Haya, have dreams. Haya describes his in the assembly of the giants. He dreamed of gardeners watering a garden which produced great shoots, but a disaster of some sort destroyed the garden in a deluge of water and fire. The other giants are unable to interpret his dream. Haya proposes that they consult Enoch for an interpretation. Then his brother Oya reports that he too had a dream in which God descended to the earth Thrones were set up, and God sat enthroned amid a multitude of angels and presided over a judgment based on the opening of certain books. The giants, presumably unable to interpret this dream either, summon Mahoe and send him to Enoch, whom he has encountered before, to ask him to interpret the dreams. Mahoe takes wing and flies across the great desert until Enoch sees him and calls to him. Mahoe refers to this as his second visit and makes the request, Bits of Enoch's interpretation may survive in a fragment that mentions the violent deaths of a number of watchers, Nephilim, and giants, and also in a small fragment that says, No peace to you. Enoch pronounces an eschatological or post-diluvian blessing of earthly prosperity. Presumably much of the story came after this point and is now lost. Reconstruction of the Aramaic Book of Giants remains extremely subjective, but a number of objective factors limit the possible arrangements and point us in certain directions. The most important external factor is the assured sequence of fragments in some of the manuscripts based on physical joins. So we see that they're having problems with putting these things together and 
seeing how clearly they line up. Uh, a third factor is the internal evidence of the fragments themselves. Stuckenbrook, building on Garcia Martinez's comments, allows for passages that pertain to the early part of the Watcher's Giants narrative when the Giants are free agents after they, or better, the Watchers, have been imprisoned. He also points to the reference to two tablets in A-10, with the second tablet being read later than the first, and to Mahaway's second visit to Enoch in A-13. In both cases, earlier lost portions of the narrative are hinted at. The biggest difference between Suckenbrook's sequencing and those of some other commentators is that he reconstructs two pairs of two dreams. Bayer, Reeves, and Garcia uh, Martinez group the fragments pertaining to dreams into one episode. Cook, however, does reconstruct multiple dream episodes, although not in precisely the same order as Struckenbrook, and Puch or Puek accepts the necessity of an earlier pair of dreams, although he does not accept that the material assigned to the second dream by Stuckenbrook in A5 belongs there, he puts it correctly, in my view, in the first dream. So we see that they really are fighting over how these reconstructions go together. And we see that the founder of the Manichaean religion was the Apostle Manny, in 216-76 to 76 CE, who was raised in southern Mesopotamia in a Jewish-Christian Baptist sect called the Elkazites. From age 12 on, Manny began to have visions. Eventually, his visionary experiences led to his being expelled from the sect, and he then founded his own religion, sending out missions to Iran, India, Syria, and Egypt. Late in his life, he fell out of royal favor and was sent to prison where he died. He wrote detailed scriptures so that his doctrines would be preserved forever, even going so far as to invent a new script to write them in. But over time, nearly all of these scriptures have been lost. This makes it very difficult to reconstruct his original theology. We know that he drew on other world religions to interpret himself as the culminating revelatory intermediary for Christianity, Zoroastrianism, and Buddhism. We also know that the Manichaean religion taught an extremely complicated system, Gnostic dualism, centered around a cosmological myth about the war between the originally pristine realms of light and darkness. The physical universe was created as a trick to liberate the captive sparks of light in living beings from the realm of darkness. There were two classes of practicing Manichaeans, the elect who lived ascetic monastic lifestyles of celibacy, vegan, uh, vegetarianism, etc., and the hearers who supported the elect financially and otherwise in the hope of being reincarnated themselves as elect in due course. Although most of Manny's scriptures are themselves lost, Lists of the titles of these documents survive in works by both friendly and hostile writers who wrote in Coptic, Greek, Arabic, and even Chinese. Allowing for minor corruptions, all the lists mention the same seven works, usually in more or less the same order. These are the Gospel, the Treasure of Life, the Pragmatia, the Treaties, the Book of Mysteries, the Book of Giants, the Epistles, and the Psalms. For our immediate purposes, the only one of interest is the Book of Giants, a work apparently composed in Syriac an eastern dialect of Aramaic, and the book was entirely lost until the 20th century, but scant ref references to it survived in Latin, Greek, and Arabic, indicating that it involved battles of the ancient giants. Then about a century ago, many highly fragmentary Manichaean works written in Central Asian languages were recovered archaeologically at Turfan in China, and much of the find remains unpublished even at present. Uh, should we read that again? Then about a hundred years ago, Many fragmentary Manichaean works written in Central Asian languages were recovered at Turfan in China, and much of the find remains unpublished. Among the published fragments are many badly eroded manuscripts of the Book of Giants in various languages. So we see again that they have found this very clearly. They probably have a very clear, good book of it, and we are not given that translation. The Manichaean versions adapted the story of the giants to fit Iranian mythology. Uh, Skiervo discusses these adaptations at length, and three of the most striking adjustments have to do with the names of the major characters. Sam or Sam is the name of the immortal dragon slayer in later Iranian epic. His name is given to the giant Ohiyah, and Ohiyah's brother Hahia is given the name Naraman, who in Iranian epic is a figure closely connected to Sam either identified with him or presented as one of his close relatives. The name of the father of the giant Mahoe, the demon Varogdad, means given by lightning in Persian, 
a loose translation of Barak El, which is Hebrew for lightning of God. The watcher Barak El seems to be the father of Mahaweh in the Aramaic version of the Book of Giants. Between Mani's Book of Giants and the stories of the giants related in the Enoch literature and in Jubilees, these were already good indicators of Mani's use of earlier Jewish traditions, a use confirmed by the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947. These consisted of many hundreds of parchment and papyrus manuscripts in Hebrew and Aramaic, with a few also in Greek, most of which had rotted away into tens of thousands of fragments. Fragments survived as some of the Enoch books in Aramaic, and also the Book of Jubilees in Hebrew. J.T. Millick has also discovered roughly six to ten extremely poorly preserved manuscripts of an Aramaic Book of Giants, apparently the document used by many as the basis for his scriptural work. These manuscripts give no indication of being sectarian compositions. Their paleographic dates fall roughly across the first century BCE, so presumably the book was composed before this, although how long before remains open to question. The kernel of the same story appears in the Bible in Genesis 6, 1-4, but as with the Book of the Watchers, it remains debatable whether the traditions about the Watchers and Giants are creative expansions of the Genesis passage, or independent transmissions of stories that have been summarized and truncated in Genesis. So, and then it talks about the Midrash of Samyaza, which Milik has published and translated in his edition of some of the Aramaic fragments of the Book of the Giants. And this work tells how at the time of the corrupt generation of the flood, the angels Samyaza and Azazel make a bet with God that if they were to descend from heaven to earth, they would be able to resist the lure of the evil inclination. But after descending, they promptly lose the bet. They notice the beauty of mortal women and cannot restrain themselves from becoming sexually involved with them. Soon they find themselves revealing heavenly secrets to their mortal wives. Samyaza begets sons named Heia and Aheia. The angel Metatron, another name for the deified Enoch in the Hecalot traditions, sends them a warning of the coming flood. Heia and Aheia each have a prognostic dream. In the first, an angel descends from heaven and scrapes an enormous stone tablet with writing on it, which was spread across the whole world until only four words remain. In the second, there is a garden full of trees and gems, but an angel descends and cuts down everything but one tree with three branches. Both dreams predict the coming of the flood and the destructions of all human beings, except Noah and his three sons. The giants are then killed in the flood, but are consoled by the fact that mortals will use their names in incantations, and thus their fame will never cease. Samyaza repents and suspends himself upside down between heaven and earth. Azazel refuses to repent and becomes a demon who entices men to corrupt deeds and who bears the sins of Israel on the Day of Atonement. Leviticus 16, 7-10 The numerous and striking parallels with the Book of Giants are obvious. Although there is only one pair of dreams in the Midrash of Samyaza, Stuckenbrook argues that the original Book of Giants had two sets, and that this may well be true also of the Manichaean version. Moving now from history of transmission to background influences, we should note that the Aramaic Book of Giants draws on ancient Near Eastern myth rather... Anyways... It gets into the Epic of Gilgamesh and, and Enkidu. Uh, and we see that that was just completely clear what has happened there. Moving now from history of transmission to background influences, the Aramaic Book of Giants draws on ancient Near Eastern myth, rather as the Manichaean version draws on Iranian. Two of the evil giants in the Aramaic version are named Gilgamesh and Hobabas. Gilgamesh is an epic figure in Sumerian and Akkadian literature, best known from the Epic of Gilgamesh, a work whose importance in ancient Mesopotamia was comparable to that of the Homeric epics in ancient Greece. According to the Epic, Il Gilgamesh, a huge, semi-divine man, has many adventures with his friend, the wild man Enkidu. One of these is the slaying of the monster Humbaba in the cedar forest. But Enkidu dies tragically, and Gilgamesh sets out to discover the secret of immortality in order to avoid his friend's fate. He meets Utnapishtim, the Babylonian version of Noah, the only man to survive the flood. Unlike Noah, Utnapishtim was made immortal by the gods. Nevertheless, Gilgamesh fails in his quest, eventually dying and leaving only his heroic fame behind him. 
The giants Gilgamesh and Hobabas are reflexes of the Gilgamesh and Humbaba Huwawa of the Gilgamesh epic. Likewise, a Sogdian text of the Manichaean version refers to Atanbush, who is either another giant or Enoch under another name. Enoch also survived the flood and was made immortal. Atanbush is clearly a reflex of Utnapishtim, and we may assume that he appeared also in some lost passage or passages in the Aramaic Book of Giants. So now knowing the knowing this more clearly, we can see that that's not what happened. It's just that they simply gave their name to that person. That that's the name that in their culture that they had given to that person. When really, there it was two cultures on the opposite, or not not even necessarily on the opposite, but on just in different places, looking at the same person and calling him a different name. But really, and then retelling the story, and you can see how it's kind of a case of the broken telephone, where when he's speaking to one culture that has one language, that entity um, is given a name in their language, but to another culture, he's given another name. And so you see that it's the same story, and then there's just a bit of broken telephone in the way that the story is told. Just the fact that they have different names, um, we can actually correlate and see that those names really are the same name and they're the same person over and over like Samyaza and and Gilgamesh and Utnapishtim that these are really they're the same people just with a different name to a different culture a hard arrow bow he that Sam said blessed be had he seen this he would not have died then Shamazad said to Sam all that Mahawe has done is spoiled. Thereupon he said to so-and-so, We are until and that are in the fiery hell, as my father Varogdaz was. Shamazad said, It is true what he says. He says one of thousands for one of thousands. Varogdad, Hobabes, robbed Ar of Noxtag, his wife. Thereupon the giants began to kill each other and to abduct their wives. The creatures, too, began to kill each other. Psalm before the sun, one hand in the air, the other towards the ground. Whatever he obtained to his brother imprisoned over Toxtag to the angels from heaven. Toxtag threw or was thrown into the water. Finally, in his sleep, Toxtag saw three signs, and portending, one woe and fight, and one annihilation. Naraman saw a garden full of trees and rows. Two hundred came out of the trees. So because it's so broken up, we really lose the uh, effect and the power of the parable. It makes one wonder if it's not been broken up somewhat on purpose. It's very difficult to piece this together properly. But when you do piece it together, we see an interesting story that continues on in the story of the Book of Enoch and the story that we've come to know here. And mainly being that the fallen angels uh, have bred with humans and that this is the, what they're talking about. And they're talking about the story of their first children and how they were killed and so this is how the angels this is part of how the angels did that was to have the egregory and have them go to have them go to, go to war against each other by having this affair go on between the king and another giant's wife and that that go drives them to war and then he goes on with several parables. And what this is actually saying is that one of these giants, one of these men that was a giant or was part of that, actually had his own uh, dream fugue in which he was given this parable. And that's what we're reading about. So I think it's pretty interesting. Um like this part, they took and imprisoned all the helpers that were in the heavens and the angels themselves descended from the heaven to the earth. And when the 200 demons saw those angels, they were much afraid and worried. They assumed the shape of men and hid themselves. Thereupon the angels forcibly removed the men from the demons, laid them aside and put watchers over them. Then it cuts up and it says the giants. Then it cuts up and says were sons with each other in bodily union. And it breaks up again with each other self something and the something that had been born to them, they forcibly removed them from the demons, and they led one half of them twenty eastwards, and the other half westwards, on the skirts of four huge mountains, 
towards the foot of the Sumeru Mountain, into thirty-two towns which the living spirit had prepared for them in the beginning. And one calls that place Arian Wizan, and those men are trained, or were, or knowledgeable in the first arts and crafts. They made something the angels, and to the demons they went to fight. And those two hundred demons fought a hard battle with the four angels until the angels used fire, naphtha, and brimstone. And that's where it breaks up again. Very interesting stuff there. Here begins Sansai's question, the world. And again, Sansai asked the light apostle, This world where mankind lives... Why does one call it birth death? And what they had seen in the answer carries on, and what they had seen in the heavens among the gods, and also what they had seen in hell, their native land, and furthermore what they had seen on earth, and all that they began to teach to the men, to Shamazad, to Sachmizad, two sons were born by one of them he named Oya in Sogdi, and he is called Sam the Giant. And again a second son was born to him, he named him Ahya. It's Sogdian equivalent. And again, a second son was born to him. He named him Aya. Its Sogdian equivalent is Potsam. As for the remaining giants, they were born to the other demons and Yaksas. And Colophon completed the chapter on the coming of the two hundred demons. Uh, and it carries on in Sogdian. Manliness and powerful tyranny, he or you shall not die. The giant Sam and his brother will live eternally, for in the whole world in power and strength. So it's like a hymn or a praise to to the giant Sam, saying that he's all powerful and that he shall not die. They didn't believe he could die. And then, and then it carries on quotations and allusions in Middle Persian. And in the coming of the two hundred demons, there are two paths the herding speech and the hard labor. These belong to or lead to hell. Now attend and behold how the great king of honor, who is Avoya, is in the third heaven. He is something with the wrath, and something in a rebellion. When malice and wrath arose in his camp, namely the egregory of heaven, who in his watch district rebelled and descended to the earth, they did all deeds of malice, they revealed the arts in the world, and the mysteries of heaven to the men. Rebellion and ruin then came about on the earth. That's in Coptic. Then in Parthian, a fragment of a treatise, entitled Rudding Weifers, Commentary on Manny's Opus, and a story about the great fire, like unto the way in which the fire with, with powerful wrath swallows this world and enjoys it, like unto the way in which this fire that is in the body swallows the exterior fire that is, in fruit and food enjoy, and enjoys it. Again, like unto the story in which two brothers who found a treasure and a pursuer lacerated each other, and they died, like unto the fight in which Oyah the Levi and the Leviathan and Raphael lacerated each other, and they vanished, like unto the story in which a lion cub, a calf in a wood, or in a meadow, and a fox lacerated each other, and they vanished or died. Thus the great fire swallows, etc., both of the fires. That carries on from where it says, And again, Sensei asked the light apostle, This world where mankind lives, why does one call it birth-death? Uh, Samsara Chin Sheng, sheng Shu. So, it's Chinese Sheng Su. So that's interesting that he's saying, Sensei asked the light apostle, this, why does one call it birth death? And then that story is the one that should be connected next to it. it. And it goes like unto the story of the great fire that swallows this world and enjoys it, like unto the way in which this fire that is in the body swallows the exterior fire that is fruit and food and enjoys it. Again, like unto the story in which two brothers found a treasure and a pursuer lacerated each other and they died. So you see that that's the piece that should be connected there, and it's pretty simple to connect it. It wouldn't take too much, really, to put those together, but they're, they're telling us that it that they can't put it together. So this is why I've taken some time to release this to you, is that I figured I may as well put it together a little more sensibly than the way that it's laid out to us, because it's laid out, again, extremely poorly. I was just listening to Zen Garcia again the other day, and recently, and 
there was a really funny part that came up, and I noticed this all the time as well. This funny part that came up where they were talking about Longinus and Lo Longinus, and the Spear of Destiny and, and Longinus, and how he was blinded in one eye, and how when he uh, speared Jesus, Jesus on the cross, that the blood and the water that shot out into his eye healed his blinded eye, his long blinded eye. And that when you check out the mainstream Wikipedia or the mainstream version of the story, they tell you, oh no, it somehow cleared up an infection that had long been bothering him. But that's not what had happened. He had a long uh, disabled eye from war. Uh, <clears throat> so he had been mortally or nearly mortally wounded and blinded in his eye and it completely healed it. So uh, you see again their their petty attempts and, and their p petty ways that they take these things apart and make them seem like they're not important. And again, like this one, you can see that it's an incredible story, but they have taken it and broken it. They've chopped it up into a... a uh, enough of a destructive manner that it's difficult to put it together properly again. So again, what it's saying that's interesting is that on Sumeru, in this in-between world, that there, uh, I guess it would be the lower parts of heaven, that there are these towns created, and 36 or 32 towns. The heaven of Indra is situated before the four peaks of the Meru and consists of 32 cities of divas, So, the Book of Giants has so far been attested in the following languages. Middle Persian, da-da-da-da-da. Uh, thus, the Book of Giants has so far only been transmitted in the East Manichaean tradition by the collection of texts in Berlin, St. Petersburg, and Kyoto. Nothing is left of the original Aramaic text. Gee, I wonder why. But through the use of material from the Book of Giants and Coptic Manichaean writings, the work had also become known as the Manichaeans of Western countries. So again, what I'm what I'm getting to here, what's interesting is that the Book of Enoch was written by him at least 300 BC, or quite a distance back, uh, before the Christian era. So what we see that's interesting here is that God hid Enoch until the appointed time. And if this information had been out for the last 3,000 years or 2,000 years and been part of the, the real public consciousness, if he'd been able to put these pieces together for all this time, humankind could have known for that entire time that these stories were real and could have gone back to God. And even after finding it, look how long it's taken for them to put it together and put it out and we hear very little of it. This is a very well-kept secret, a very well-guarded secret. And then even the parts that they let out are only portions of the actual text, and they're missing major chunks that have to be filled in by us. And as you see, we've had to go to at least 20 different sources to get all this information. So carrying on about the giants and Satan himself. The Book of Giants tells the story of those demons who were chained up by the living spirit, assisted by his seven sons in the seven lower firmaments of the sky, and of whom two hundred had been able to free themselves and return to earth. Here the human race had already spread and it was the period of the Apostle Enoch. The demons, traditionally called guardians, subjugated humanity and established a tyrannical rule of terror. And with the daughters of mankind, they begot a race of giants. The extant fragments mention one of the leaders of the demons, Sachmizad, Middle Persian. Uh, and then you see SXMYZ, which is Samyaza, Samyaza, and Shmoizid. His sons, the giants, Sham, Sogd, Sham, Shem, and Naraman, another leader who's under Virogdad, which is that king Virogdad. His son Mahawe 
and other names, they describe the fight among the demons, the killing of 400,000 just men, and the struggle of Shamas against the sea monster Leviathan, and the terrible nightmares announcing the punishment of the demons. To seek their interpretation, the winged Mahawai is sent to the apostle Enoch, who was carried to heaven. Finally, the four avenging angels, identified as Raphael, Michael, Gabriel, and Israel, or Uriel, were told to put an end to the evil doings of the demons and incarcerated them and their sons, i.e. the giants. So just another uh, place there where it's, it's identified. The Qumran fragments of the Enoch book also resemble the Manichaean Book of Giants because they consider figures of the Mesopotamian Gilgamesh epic as giants. And this is from Millik's theory. Okay. Despite the names of Sam and Naraman, known from the Iranian epic tradition, the story of the giants is not of Iranian origin. Due to Ghazanfar's reference to these figures, Kumant had once assumed the Book of Giants to be of Iranian origin. But the Turfan text and the Dead Sea Scrolls contradicted this theory. The Iranian names in the Book of Giants in the East Manichaean tradition are translations, not the original. Today an Iranian influence can at most be assumed. So you see that, again, it, it is clearly that these beings were all over the earth and had just different names given to them. 